Our next guest is an artist who is as colorful as her paintings. Christina de Musée, a former Las Vegas showgirl, paints bold images that she observed in the Nevada desert. Her favorite subjects are people of the night, and her works can be found in the collections of prominent Californians, including Johnny Carson and Roland Joffe. De Musée is also famous for the razzle-dazzle openings of her exhibitions, and she says that she would like to be the Grace Jones of the art world. Well, you are colorful. Is this a typical painting outfit that we're seeing right now? Well, actually, this is more of my low-profile look. Aha. Uh -huh. More like a UFO from Las Vegas, all the jingle jangles. Well, in a way, you are from Las Vegas. I mean, art mm -hmm. was not the beginning. Art came after mm -hmm. another career, or maybe career as a dancer, performer, right. Las uh, Vegas showgirl, yeah. the runt of the lot. The runt of the lot, yes. I was a Las Vegas showgirl in the Lido de Paris. The Follies Berger, and I danced in Beirut, in Casino de la Bon. And actually, I was the runt of the Bluebell Girls, most of them being about six foot four. Five foot nine is kind of short for that a That sounds like a very glamorous life. Is it a glamorous life? It is. It's a very glamorous life. Most of the women that uh, surrounded me were uh, hybrids, uh, genetic uh, superior females you never would see exactly in a normal situation. You know, your paintings demonstrate some of that. As I looked at a collection, of a sample of them, some of the women's faces were very hard. A lot of them were very intense. Mm -hmm. And I wondered what was behind the facade that we see in a showgirl. Does a showgirl look at the audience? Does she think about her grocery list? What did you think about? All showgirls look at the audience. And uh, we, we think about a lot of different things. Mostly we get very nervous before we go on. After we get out there, it's, uh, it's interesting to see. It's mostly men, and there are some women, and they're looking at us as if we're some sort of uh, goddess-like entities. Power? Does that give you a lot of it's power? A, it's, a, it's a bit of a powerful uh, feeling. A lot of it I transmitted to the uh, pieces that I do that are bigger than life. They're like giant mythological uh, beacons that uh, float out like Zardoz. I don't know if you remember Zardoz. Well, I don't, but I have seen the pictures. And the intensity of the women, as I mentioned, is important, which is why I find it interesting that in going to Libya, you would be in a world of women submissive, women mm -hmm. in shadow, women behind the scenes. Now, how did a woman like you manage in that kind of a culture? Oh, it was very difficult. I was there for about three years. And uh, at first, I was... Uh, totally comfortable with the, the male um, counterparts. I met a lot of very important people there, mostly in embassies and things. And after a while, I was invited to a lot of private dinners there, and I never saw any of the women. Well, one day, I, I was introduced to the woman that was sequestered behind the walls, more or less, and she'd been waiting there all evening for me. I had no idea she was there. Uh, they were treated totally as uh, second, third, fourth class citizens. They were there to have children, and they were to be thrown aside. The whole culture there was uh, two, three, four, five wives. I mean, four is the most you can well, have you at one time. Well, you were married. You were married. I was married there. at the time. And how did it impact upon your life, and how did it impact upon your art? Well, it made me very angry, because I was used to pretty much calling my own rules. You know, you audition for a show, you're the center attraction, you're young, you have everything, you know. And then you go to Libya, and you're treated like absolute... Uh, Oh, I think something you'd walk on, literally. So it made me very angry, and so I started painting in earnest when I was in Libya. And of course, being the only artist, I had wonderful shows, embassy shows, and everyone collected my work because they were revolutionary types of paintings. And the only woman artist in all of Libya, of course, is not much competition. But, but were, were your activities circumscribed? I mean, did you have to dress in a certain way? You met Muammar Gaddafi, for example. Did you have to behave in a deferential way in meeting him? Well, I didn't at first. In fact, I got arrested a number of times for uh, wearing mini dresses, and my legs were sprayed. Well, you do have legs. I mean, <laughs> there is little question that there they are. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I got arrested for everything you could imagine, you know. And uh, the Arabs kept saying, you should dress in a uh, more low-key way. So actually, I went totally Arab for a while, and I wore the barrack hands of the woman, and, and I took Arabic lessons, and I tried to uh, totally absorb in the community. And they didn't like that either. You know, I mean, I had blue eyes, unless you're a Berber. You know, it doesn't go to go over well. They think you're mocking their culture. Well, not to do that, certainly. But mm -hmm. in attempting that kind of immersion, mm -hmm. did you see the world differently? 
totally. you try to see it through the eyes of an Arab woman? How it, was it different? It, it was somewhat desperate. It gave me a terrible feeling of anxiety being there. In fact, I, I was in such a state of anxiety that the revolution uh, occurred when I was there. We were under house arrest. Then it compounded being a woman who was pretty much a free spirit and a thinker and a traveler and not used to being uh, sequestered. It was a horrible experience. Uh, of course, I compensated by painting and uh, getting arrested a lot, you know. Well, that sounds like an interesting yeah, lifestyle. Kind of Christina, what is the message you want to bring to uh, those who purchase your works and those who view your works? As you think in your mind, as they kind of go, mm -hmm. the canvases go past you, what is it you'd like us to get from having you hmm. in our living rooms? Well, that's a very good question. Actually, um, there is a marriage between the collector and the artist. Uh, I guess most artists unconsciously know this. Uh, when I do a piece of artwork, it's like giving birth to something that's very private. It's a, a bit of my soul. So when a collector acquires my work, it's, uh, it's a spiritual connection. I hate to use that word. It's very cliched in California. But it truly is uh, a presence that they're acquiring in their home or wherever they should be doing business. So. Um, as they look into these pieces, they're not just seeing a piece of paper or canvas. It's, it's a presence and it, it's a cathectic statement that hopefully is stimulating in an intellectual and an emotional way. So that's what I'm really trying to do, but kind of in a bigger than life type of uh, a statement. Would it be just terribly crass mm -hmm. if I were to ask what the range that one would have to pay for a piece of your work mm -hmm. might be? Just give us a ballpark figure. Uh, my work ranges anywhere from, um, say, around 4000 to about 25000 depending on how big, how complicated, how original, how provocative. Well, you are. You, know. you are perhaps all of the above, as cool. a matter of Thank fact. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. It's fun to meet mm -hmm. the person who welds the brush and the palette. I thank you for being with us today. It's been a pleasure.